Today, a tentative debt ceiling agreement has been reached. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics, one that is post covering finance and property news. Well, the White House and Republican negotiators say that they've reached a tentative deal to raise the US debt ceiling and so avert a default that threatened to send tremors through the global economy. This was announced late on Saturday night. President Joe Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, who sealed the agreement during a 90 minute phone call, has still to shepherd the framework to final legislative passage over the objections of hardliners in both parties. So it's not a done deal yet. McCarthy said that he'll be talking to Biden again on Sunday and will line up the bill for a vote on Wednesday. We've still got a lot of work to do, but I believe this is an agreement in principle that is worthy of the American people, McCarthy told reporters at the Capitol. There is, of course, little margin for error here, with Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen warning that an extension must be finalised by around June the 5th to avoid a historic default, which would send borrowing costs soaring. And in fact, the Treasury Department have already been using unusual measures to try and eke out the debt ceiling. The deal, reached after weeks of bitter discussions, include a two-year appropriation agreement that keeps non-defence spending roughly flat with current levels, Defence spending would rise next year by 3.3% under the agreement, as Biden requested in his proposed budget. That is below the rate of inflation, so it doesn't meet Republican defence hawks' aspirations for a military build-up. But it is a break from the 2011 debt limit deal, in which spending caps were equally applied to defence and non-defence spending. The deal means that many federal programs will face budget cuts next year since there will be no increase to account for inflation. Congress, though, always has the authority to approve more spending in the case of an unexpected event such as a war or pandemic. And a broad plan to speed up energy project approvals has largely been scrapped from the accord. That's a win for progressives who oppose major changes in a bedrock environmental law, according to a Democratic aid. Fossil fuel companies and their Republican supporters gained only minor tweaks to streamline environmental reviews, such as designating a sole lead agency to shepherd a single impact review. And it also suspends a debt limit through to January 2025 or thereabouts. That's after the next presidential election. Although, actually, that final date might be still to be hashed out. Either way, it does set up a scenario in 2025, similar to this year, when the Treasury Department began employing extraordinary measures in January to avert a default. Economists have said that even a short default would have seen dramatic market declines and the loss of hundreds of thousands of jobs. And in fact, on May the 24th, Fitch Ratings placed the US AAA credit rating on watch in a move that reflected mounting concerns that the US would, in fact, go over the brink. The agreement doesn't create work requirements for Medicare payments, but it does place limits on the food assistance program known as SNAP up to age 54, a measure that House Republicans pushed for. That would be phased out by 2030, however. In addition, the deal creates a mechanism to force Congress to complete annual appropriation bills for 2024, and it would pose a 1% cut across the board if the bills are not passed. This encourages Republicans, who would forego the defence increases in the CAPS deal, to come to an agreement decreasing the chances of an October 1 government shutdown. Initial reaction from economists without knowing all the details of the reported agreement indicated little expectation the pullback in government spending that would have had an outsized impact on the overall economy. Michael Ferrari, chief US economist at JP Morgan Chase, said in an email that the reported deal wouldn't substantially change the outlook issued last week as the White House and Republican lawmakers drew close to an agreement. In the note to clients on May 24, Ferrari suggested a cap on non defense federal spending through fiscal year 24 would only have a modest impact on growth and could be offset if the Federal Reserve responded with a slightly less aggressive approach to its quest 
to slow the economy and tame inflation with higher interest rates. Although the tense negotiations put the country on edge, the agreement could bolster both Biden and McCarthy politically, assuming, of course, it gathers enough support on Capitol Hill. And the president, of course, managed to sidestep some of the biggest threats to the post-pandemic economic recovery as he seeks a second term. Yet meeting some GOP demands also risks alienating progressives that he needs to propel his re-election campaign. Still would claw funding for internal revenue service agents and accelerate some energy project environmental reviews, according to a GOP summary. And the summary said that domestic spending in 2024 would be cut to fiscal 2022 levels. The differing take from the White House view is likely due to some accounting gimmicks. In terms of COVID-19 funding, the White House protected money for next generation vaccines, veterans medical care funding, housing voucher funding, and Indian health services, according to one source. The agreement represents a compromise, which means not everyone gets what they want, Biden said in a statement. So whilst President Joe Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy have compromised on the bitterly contested disputes over federal spending and assistance for the poor as part of their debt limit deal, they now have to sell the deal to lawmakers in both parties. Anyway, as a result of this, you can expect markets, of course, to react positively, remembering that the US is closed on Monday. So we'll see the first action properly in Asia on Monday. But of course, there's still some water to go under the bridge before the deal is done. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.